Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone, no matter where you are in the world. It's lovely to be here. And thank you, Lucy and Mark, for facilitating this event. Um, as you can see from my title, I'm going to be talking about the distance, the positives of distance learning. And I'll start off with this image. This image will now forever be linked 2020, COVID-19 and the pandemic it actually led to. So no matter where we are, where, no matter where we presently are in the world, whether we work within state schools, independent schools, we were all completely taken by surprise when things changed in terms of teaching and learning from what we're used to in terms of teaching within a classroom setting, a school setting with our students, and this concept of online learning. So no matter whether you use the term online learning, remote learning, distance learning, many teachers felt, as you see depicted in this image, in relation to this particular term, because it was moving completely away from what we were actually used to. Yet, Teacher Tap. So Teacher Tap is a service within the UK that undertakes surveys every single day with teachers across the UK by posing three questions. And at the beginning of August, they pose this particular question and over 90 percent of the educators, there are 8000 educators approximately that answered, responded that they were proud in varying degrees of the support that schools provided for the students during lockdown. And this implicitly links to the distance learning and the use of edtech. So obviously, I'm going to be focusing on positives, but from a slightly unique perspective. I'm going to be doing it from the perspective of my school, as well as sharing some examples of educators, I'm sure that will resonate with your own circumstance, no matter where you are in the actual world. So to explain about my school, it is a special school. So every single student actually has complex learning needs and they have an EHCP and it's also alternative provision and by that it means that every one of our students as every single student every child has actually been out of formal education mainstream education for varying degrees of time at least about six to nine months and the most extensive three years being out of mainstream schooling and because of that context we only have about 15 students who are aged from 14 to 19 years old and they are taught in a one-to-one -one context and i'll be honest and put my hand up and say when we could actually see lockdown looming and going to distance learning, I was worried. I was thinking, how are we going to make it work? Because those of our students are tactile learners, so they need to actually have the physical resources to actually aid their learning and also to be guided through with the support of teachers or an additional, learning, uh, um, additional adult in the class. But I'm going to share the positives of how we actually made it work in four different contexts. So the first context is, uh, the communications, regular contact and clear communication channels. And they were in all of these regards, formal, informal and unofficial. The relevant staff members. So we have keys members within our school who are the only ones that can be in contact with our families, whether they're the parents, carers or guardians of our students. And they will ask a few basic questions. First of all, how are you? Looking at how they were and understanding the context in which they were actually operating within so that we understood and made no assumptions. And then we ask, what technology do you actually have at home? And they were very open and honest because they could see from the get go that we were there to support them and to support them during this challenge and also support them to do the distance learning that we undertook we got some very honest answers. So we had a clear idea about what was actually in place. With staff, there were regular communications. So we had daily briefings, both in the morning and in the afternoon. In the morning to set things up so we could actually see what we're going to be teaching, the students we we're actually engaging with, and a reminder to note any concerns or note any positives that we actually saw in what we called our COVID-19 log, a Google spreadsheet just to act, um, a log things so that if there are any issues we need to act upon, we could actually do that. We had regular staff updates of key aspects. So obviously changes within the government and also if there were any things that we actually heard that may actually impact upon the learning of the students, we actually kept abreast of that as well as staff discussions. Now we had WhatsApp groups, so there were frequent and informal communications. If we needed to get messages shared, this is how we actually did it. Mindful of we were about the fact that there were some concerns at the very beginning about WhatsApp and privacy. So we never ever used any students' names, but we still made sure that the communication flow was there. We used the Zoom meetings and also phone, phone calls where necessary if things were emergency and we actually had to get in contact.
Now, this provided us a strong foundation of communication, which was open, transparent, flexible and fast between the staff, our students, parents, carers and guardians and the wider school communication. And this facilitated the distant learning that we wanted to undertake. Now, the second aspect that we had to consider, and we actually got some positives, were the teaching and learning. As I said to you from the, uh, the very beginning, our context was, is unique because a lot of the resources, they have to be hands on for our students. We had to learn really quickly. We knew from the honest and open conversations that many of our students, our young people and their families only had access to the Internet and the learning resources through mobiles. So we had to be proactive and think how we're going to make it work. But it worked really well for our practical subjects. So where we had subjects that were actually helping students to develop particular skills, say, for example, like cooking, we were able to do this through the mobile. But we'd also reminded parents about the fact that not only should you keep your children safe and we shared this with e-learning guides we want to remind them whenever we actually take um, lessons through the mobile you have to be there to support and at, at that and reinforce the safeguarding aspects but our staff rose the challenge prior to the lockdown I'll be honest and say not many of us actually used a tech or any form of technology to actually aid the teaching but we we learned quickly so we use predominantly Google Classroom to actually share and upload resources for our students Google Meet Zoom, as well as WhatsApp. Again, with key staff actually facilitating the phone calls, the video phone calls, so that facilitated the relevant lessons where it was actually necessary. In addition to this, in terms of the flexible teaching and learning, we still continued with our um, professional development. They were from an external basis, the so things that we were actually learning, it was really positive to see a lot of free CPD being offered around the UK and even around the world that we could actually bring into our schools and bring into the lessons that we we're actually trying to deliver and also share key messages with staff. In-house though, we actually offered, as Kate Rad said, bite-sized training opportunities. So no more than five minutes and very practical. So for example, how to include audio within your PowerPoints that could actually aid the learning. But what was even more magical is that even through this virtual space, we were able to undertake good practice, share good practice. One of our staff members that teaches students with global learning delays actually showed the PowerPoint that she used from beginning to end that enabled them to continue with their learning in a meaningful way. And we could actually celebrate that and actually view it in ways we hadn't quite been able to do before. But it also reminded us that with regards to distance learning, teachers are also learners and we did that in abundance. But the wow moments, the power was the fact that where we saw some students who maybe were quite passive in their learning through the virtual environment, they thrive, they learned. So the Google Classroom, at the beginning of the week, we actually set our learning activities and learning resources for students. And some of our students were able to engage with that and actually work to the breadth and depth at their own pace. We saw some students who were completely change from being passive learners to independent learners. Many of our students had accelerated process, progress within the context of a distance learning. We could see improvements in their learning, which was heartening and showed us that we were doing the right things. But equally, because our flexible approach, it facilitated high levels of engagement. The third aspect that we actually had positives in were regards to marking and feedback adaptations. So like many other schools, we have a marking and feedback policy, but we streamlined it just to remove the complexity and make sure that students were clear about what they had to do to three concepts. So any feedback that we gave in writing or orally focused on these three aspects, what was done well, what they needed to improve and specific actions to implement, which, were re which was really powerful because where our students struggled with home learning, maybe because of the fact that they, because they've been out of school, they hadn't actually established the homework routines. We were able to use the lesson time online to actually get them to action things. So they could see what, how their learning had actually adapted by updating information and the learning points. And that worked even within, say, for example, with art lessons where everything was actually visual and through, um, 
through say WhatsApp videos and things like that, even to emails. Some of our students did not like to be on the video. They did not want to be seen, but they still were want, waiting, to, uh, ready to actually learn. And so for example, this email screen um, is an example of an email that I sent to people that still enabled the child to actually get feedback upon what they actually learned. Now, the fourth aspect is by all my means, even though it's the last aspect of the four I'm going to be sharing, it is the most important, the mental health and well-being focus. That basically threaded through everything because of a quote that my head teacher shared at the very beginning of the lockdown experience. And she said this, we have to take care of ourselves in order to be in a good position to take care of our students. And that basically meant the same questions that were being asked to our school community, our parents, carers and guardians. How are you? How are things with your family? How are the things with your, you know, within your context? Meant that we as a team were able to support each other and put things in place as and when need be. But we also did this in a number of different ways. As um, had been mentioned earlier today, uh, by Nick, we had a Friday focus for well-being, which undertook a number of different things, including the celebrations of birthdays and any positive news that we experienced. But furthermore, we had quizzes for Kahoot to review our learning and also to just see how it worked in action. We even played games like Stop the Bus, and you can see by my face, I'd never encountered this before, but it was, it was quite um, an interesting experience that actually enabled us to take our mind off the serious aspects we were actually encountering. And also one memorable aspect where we had our art teacher leading uh, the morning and actually asking us to bring a piece of art that meant something to us. And through that activity, it enabled us to learn each other. We had frequent opportunities to laugh together as a team. And this fostered an even more of a cohesive team that uh, were trying to do the very, very best for the young people that we actually serve. Now, in addition to that, I just wanted to share a couple of um, stories from other educators that I encountered during the lockdown period. Myself and Mark Anderson, we actually have a Friday evening during the term time session for an hour called UK Edge Stories, and it's looking at the positives. Despite all the challenges that are out there, we were actually actively looking for the positives. So you have Michelle Grant, who was one of our guests um, earlier on. She appeared in April. She's a year four primary teacher who shares some of the ways in which she actually abled, enabled the students as well as herself to maintain a relationship, even though they weren't um, actually speaking from a physical, um, from a virtual context. She also made sure that she communicated by email so that the parents could actually access it, but she made sure to take care in sharing how proud she was of what the children were actually trying to do during this unusual context and made sure that she provided feedback to the parents to give them assurance because she knew that many of them were really worried about doing the right things and were worried about whether or not they were supporting the home learning of their children. She made sure that she took time to do this. We have another educator, Michael, geography head of department, who spoke about how he undertakes assessments and he spoke about using low stake um, assessments to minimise the anxiety that students might actually have around assessments to enable, the, enable them to review their learning. He talks about, spoke about how the fact that because these uh, assessments help the students to build their confidence, they were more willing to engage. But he also did explain about the fact that this basically was the continuation of some of the practices they actually did within the school environment. So it was great to actually continue this on a virtual basis. And he also spoke about how some of the feedback practices that they undertook within his school also helped to minimise workload, particularly if they were actually providing her, um, whole class feedback, looking at misconceptions, common next steps, etc. Another positive that I learned through many discussions um, with educators within the UK and around the world is the fact that EdTech the distance learning provides a lever to really highlight your core values. So where you've got these particular core values within a school context, as I found within my school, it was still being exemplified. And that was something that was very surprising, but heartening to actually see. And I'll end by actually sharing some key messages that I think we can all actually resonate with. 
we actually are flexible in our approaches as educators, no matter where we are, and we are doing the very, very best for our students. Even if we were learning through mistakes, I actually tend to see, don't see them as actually mistakes, but actually finding what worked for our students. And there was actually no shame or anything like this. Everyone was actually being proactive and solution focused. We operated as a cohesive unit. And this is me having to give thanks to the head teachers all around the world for actually stepping up and taking the challenge to do the very, very, very best by their school community during these challenging times. And here's an example that I saw on LinkedIn. Elroy Cahill, King's head teacher of Kingsley Academy, shared this Ofsted mock-up that his year 11 students had actually drawn up to show that he was an outstanding head teacher. They appreciated what the school actually did, but in re relation particularly for the coronavirus planning. And I think being shared ahead of our GCCs is something that is really important. So my question to you is, where can you find examples of positive, um, uh, positive distance learning? What I call those memory making moments. You can see by my face, I'm still engaged, I'm still smiling, in memory of what we experience as the course Q community, in spite of the backdrop that we're operating against. And even if it means that on some days and some weeks, you have to look long and hard, find those find those, celebrate them and share them with your school and the wider community as well. Thank you so much.